In this video, we're going to see how to automatically run JUnit test with InfiniTest. First, a very quick introduction. Why don't we do unit tests? What are some blockers that prevent us from doing unit tests? First of all, we might say I can't test this because there are too many dependencies on some external events or external factors, and for that we'll use Mockito. Another thing is we might not know what's covered and what's not covered, and with that we'll use code coverage with Echolemma. I have videos that cover both of these items. This video covers the final bullet point, which is we simply forget to run unit tests. So this reminds me of the old days when I started teaching back around 2000, 2001. You had to remember to press F9 to compile. And a lot of times a student would come up to me and say, yeah, I can't figure out my program. And I'd take a look and it was something that was honestly sloppy, it couldn't be worked with. And I'd ask the student, when's the last time you compiled? And the student would often say, oh, five days ago, but I get so many errors, I don't compile anymore. Well, once compiling became compulsory, in other words, every time we save, we compile, we got instant feedback and we knew to make changes quickly to resolve red lines. Let's apply that same concept to unit testing. If we can run the unit test without even thinking about it, we see the errors, then we remember to keep our unit test up to date. On the other hand, if we forget to run our unit tests, they quickly become out of date, they become part of technical debt instead of resolving technical debt, and then we just tend to throw them away. So we used to have a tool called JUnit Flux that would run unit tests automatically when we save. That tool I really liked, it has been dep deprecated. Now we have a tool that I like just as much, if not more, called InfiniTest. It's very easy to install and to run. To install, we simply go to the Eclipse Marketplace and we download it, which I'll do in just a moment. To run, we simply turn on automatic builds, which actually we don't have to, it's just easier that way, and then make a change and save, and the test will run automatically. So let's go to Eclipse, just a moment, and let's go to the Marketplace and let's install InfiniTest. So I simply go Help, Eclipse Marketplace, and then I search for InfiniTest, InfiniTest, and search. Yeah, pretty easy. Yeah, this one comes up install. It's a, a very typical Eclipse installation. Of course, read the uh, license in detail and choose finish. This will require that we restart. So I will go ahead and pause the video as, as this installs, and then we'll restart. Once Eclipse restarts, we're going to look at a few different examples that use unit testing with InfiniTest. First, we have a failing unit test, one called Test Search Plants. This will fail based on a null point or exception because we haven't properly mocked out a dependency. After that, we're going to take a look at a working unit test, one that's called Test Plant Service. Be careful, that sounds very similar to Test Search Plants, but it is a different test. Now, Test Plant Service is testing a class called, guess what, Plant Service. And on our first, on our first run, this will pass. What we're going to do then is we're going to break it. We're going to change the class being tested, which is plant service. We're going to have it return null instead of return legitimate results. And we'll see the effect that that has on test plant service. It's essentially going to put some red compile errors up that indicate where the test fails. After that, we're going to go back and fix the class being tested, again, plant service. We're going to make it return legitimate results, and then we'll see what effect that has on our test. Eclipse is now restarted with InfiniTest installed. I have about three tests I've already written in this project. One of them is called Test Plant Service, which uses a bit of Mockito to test this thing called, naturally, Plant Service. So let's watch what happens when I make just a subtle change to this, maybe just add a space and hit save. Watch on the lower right here, and also watch on the lower left. The lower right will tell us that InfiniTest is looking for changes, and then the lower left will tell us what, uh, what tests it has run. So I save, and InfiniTest looking for tests, over here running tests, and it tell, tells us that it has run three different tests. Now here's something very interesting. If we take a look at test plant service, notice that this is one of the tests, and everything looks good. There's nothing over here to the right. Um, if I take a look at some of the other tests, like test search plants, we're going to see that there are now three compile layers where there didn't used to be compile layers before. 
And the reason for these compile layers is in this win invoke uh, execute method. If I take a look in here, it requires a dependency called plant service, which is something that I should mock out with my keto. But in this test called test search plants, I have not mocked that out. So uh, that's okay. We can solve this two ways. The best way is mock it out. But uh, in long term, that's the right way to do it. But another thing that we can do in the short run is we can create an infinite test filter where we say, you know what, why don't you ignore this test for the time being? Uh, we can do this by creating a file called infinitest.filters. Notice that ends with an S. And then if we do a period, an asterisk, and then a word, that will exclude all classes that end with that word. A period and an asterisk just doesn't run any test whatsoever. And then uh, a package name, and I believe there, I, I think I have a little typo here, should be an asterisk there, will ignore all tests that are in a certain package. So let's try this out. I go all the way to the root. I right click and I choose new and I'm going to choose file. And we're going to call this infinitest.filters, just like so. And we put it all the way at project root. Okay, uh, now let's follow our syntax where we had period star. We'll use the name test search plants. And we'll go ahead and save this. And now I'm going to go back to my plant service and make another just silly little change and save. Once again, we'll see looking for tests. We see one test case ran, and which one did it run? So it's, it's a little tricky to mouse over this. Test plant service ran. That's this guy right here, the one who has worked all along. Notice that it ignored test search plants, as an, and, and as a matter of fact, it has removed the compile errors that we saw earlier. So. The infinitest filters, you know, we don't want to keep anything in there for a long time, but if we have a test we know doesn't run, we know we have some work to get it to run, we could ignore it temporarily, just like so. Let's try one more thing then. I'm going to go back to test plant service, and we see that, let's take a look at one of these tests that's run. Given that plant service is populated with plant DAO, when filter with red, then verify two results. Okay, when filter with red, is calling this filter plants method on plant service, which is the class that we are testing. What if instead of returning a legitimate result, what if I return null, which obviously is something we don't want to do, especially in production code. Let's see what happens. I save and take a look at what happened. Did you see the test broke? So let's take a look. This is the test that previously was running. You see the test broke, and it indicates that with a compile error. So null pointer exception, and then verify two results. Okay, um, that's because this thing called filter plants, which is what gets returned when we in, when we search for the word red, that is now null. Why is that null? Because we turned it, told it to return null instead of telling it to return return plants. So you see, we have just broken our code and our test is telling us this. So this is really efficient test-driven design because you see we write the test and the test doesn't pass until our class that we're writing that is being tested satisfies that test criteria. As soon as we satisfy the test criteria, and I'll go ahead and permanently remove this, watch over here, watch test plant service. As I save, I've now fixed the class that I'm testing. Now the test runs and you see now the test passes because I have fixed the class that is being tested. So test, good idea for test-first design, test-driven design, because we can write our tests, and we know our tests will show an error until the class being tested fulfills the requirements of that test. Also, test is a great idea for unit testing in general, because we tend to find issues that otherwise would go ignored, like not mocking properly or having some dependencies that are not correct. So it can help us find that out so that we don't say, oh gosh, I haven't run my test in six months and now they're so far behind, why even bother? So a good part of a, of a good quality program, a good test-driven design program. And these days with App Store ratings being, being a very important and very crucial in the app decision-making process, we have to put quality first. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to seeing you in the next. Thank you.